Yeah, guys, what's up? I hope you are doing great. Uh, in case if you are new on my YouTube channel, subscribe, comment, and share, guys. And uh, let us know what you think about uh, our video today, guys. I'm with someone here who want to share with. So I hope you are going to enjoy this video. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Yo. We on the paper chase. Can you relate? We, how's it, my man? All right, good day. My name is Mark. Today, my story is a little bit different from the others that you've heard okay. about gangsterism, running guns, you know, drugs, all that sort of stuff. My story is a little bit different. My story is about how lonely and depressed drugs can make you feel, how it takes everything away from you, you know, all that sort of stuff. See, I was born in London, England. I was born actually in Brighton. Um, okay. It's about. It's about the size of Port Elizabeth, you know, it's a very small fishing, farming, well, fishing town. We moved to South Africa when I was seven years old because my dad was an alcoholic and he was beating my mother. So they got divorced and uh, when they got divorced, uh, they made a decision, you know, one can stay and one can go. So my mom chose me to come to South Africa with her and my brother. He stayed in England with my dad. He's still there now. He's making big money. And uh, he's looking after my dad now. And we moved to South Africa when I was seven. We stayed by my aunt's house for a year. till I was eight years old. And then I went to school. So you see, I even went to school late because of all of these things. Um, when I was 13, my stepdad, my mom remarried. When I was 13, my stepdad, he told me I must go get a job. You see, because they were tired of always paying for me for everything. You see, my family comes from a lot of money. Money is not a problem for them, you see. Mm -hmm. I was the problem for them. So they told me at the age of 13, I must go work, I must go get a job. So I got my first job when I was 13, looking after children at a restaurant. Um, I met a girl there. You can call her my first love if you want to. She was doing heroin. She was 16 and I was 13. The first girlfriend you had. Yeah, you can call it first girlfriend, first love, first everything, you yeah, know. Yeah. And she and was she doing was she was do, and she was doing heroin. I didn't know what it was, I knew nothing about it. All I know is that I loved this girl and I wanted to impress her, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be a punk and like, no, oh, I can't do this, you know, be scared or whatever. So she got me hooked on heroin. I had my first shot of heroin from her. And uh Diane, if you somehow watching this by some chance, you know, how's it? I'm still alive, I'm still doing well, as you can see, still living. Still gonna put the ball. But anyway, so <clears throat> I got my first shot of heroin from her and I fell in love with it instantly. Um, I used heroin for about a year. Um, uh, uh, since you started uh, 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 using heroin, mm. is how many years now? In total? Well, I'm 50 years old now. I started using heroin when I was 13. When I was 13, you are 50 years old now. I'm 50 oh. years old, believe it or not. I still a long time. It's a long time, I mean, it's a long time to be alive in this game. You know, I'm surprised I've made it this far. So let's say it's about plus minus 30 years that I've been doing this, you know. So do you, do you got a kid? Yeah, I've got a daughter. She stays in America with her mom. Um, her mom came down for, um, she was studying to be a vet, you know, the, the work on the animals and whatnot. Mm. And I was working at a game farm as a chef. See, that's the other thing I've got to bring up is that I was, you know, in the top, I was number nine chef in South Africa. Oh. You know, in the top ten, I was number nine. That's how I built myself up through life. You know, there's so much to tell. There's just, you know, if I have to carry on, my story will keep you busy for hours, but you know, we only have so much time. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, you know, uh, my daughter, she lives in America with her mom. She's living lacquer and happy. They come down to visit. They're coming down in December to come and say hello. They you, they you to come and visit you? Yeah, they come and visit me. So know? if they come and they find you in this situation, you are, how do you think your daughter feel? To be honest with you, I'm hoping to be out of the situation before they come because if they come and I'm still in the situation, I can guarantee you that it will be the last time that I see my daughter. You understand? Because she's warned me many times before, you know. She knows about what I, not my daughter, 
the mother. She knows about what I'm doing, you understand, what I've been involved in. Um, and she's warned me, she said to me, listen, if you carry on with this, you know, you're not going to see your daughter ever again, you know. I'll keep her away from you. So I need to get myself sorted, I need to get my life sorted out before December when they come, you know. So what I've got to say is, you know, up until this stage, you know, my I'm alone, you know. Drugs has taken my family away from me. You know, I walk alone. All I have in life is this guy. This is my brother. This is my family. This yeah. is who I have. I'm gonna die for my little nigga, you see? Drugs. In the streets of dog eat dog world, and ain't nobody gonna eat my dog because I will die for my homies. And you can see it on my eyes, I ride for my homies. But I ain't gonna steal the glory from him. We're not here to glorify what we do. All we wanna do is help other people to not go down the same path that we went because we've been there and we've done that and it's not an answer, guys. All you youngsters out there, you're smoking the tick, popping the perkies, you think it's funny? It's not funny. Listen to your mama, stay in school, get educated and keep your, le your head on your shoulders. You see, it's all... It's all fun and games yeah. now, you know, in the beginning it's all lovely, you know, the feeling, all that stuff. You think you can get away with it, you're on top of the world, you're flying high. And then eventually the carpet gets swept out from under you. And you wake up in reality, you wake up in a gutter somewhere on the streets, alone, on the verge of death. You're always hungry, you know, but you're still willing to sell your, fucking sorry, you're still willing to sell your soul. For that little bag of heroin or that little bag of tick or that little bag of cocaine whatever you're doing you know you're willing to sell your life for that and let me tell you something it's not worth it i may be 50 years old and look flush you know according to me but man what i've been through like i said i may not have been the biggest gangster i may not have killed anyone i may not have carried any guns but i've been to prison i've been to rehab I am homeless. I do sleep on the streets. So you've been to rehab. Yeah. So what? Uh, what made you come back into drugs again? Why are you? Went because to, uh, let me tell you something. Rehab is a school for scoundrels, just like drug, just like prison is. Everybody's there for drug problems. So that's all they talk about is the drugs, the drugs, the drugs. Rehab doesn't work. The only way you're gonna change is if you want to change yourself. No one can change you. You know there's that saying that says you can take a horse to water but you can't make a drink. It's the same thing about rehab. I can take you to the best rehab in the world. And my man, if you're not willing to change inside your heart and in your mind, you will never come clean. You will never leave that thing. You need to decide you need to change. Now on the streets, now, I've decided to make a change. Yes, I still, I still spike, but not as much as I used to. It's slowly coming down. I'm slowly coming right. Because I don't want to live this life anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this game. I'm tired of sleeping on the streets. I'm tired of waking up, not knowing what I did the day before or the night before, you know. Waking up in someone else's garbage, in someone else's yard. Getting woken up at night by the, not the normal police, just the normal community police. And getting the shit beaten out of you with sticks and poles. I mean, that's not a nice life. You know, I wonder, I wonder the, the, the time you say you you are a number nine chief cook here yeah. in South Africa. And right now you are living this kind of life, sleeping outside, no house. How, 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 how did it? How did it come? How did it come? Then? Like I told you, from that little bag. That little bag can control your life. It can take everything away from you. So you mean if as a small bag that was the heroin, if you start and trying, it's gonna make you yeah. uh, destroy your whole life. Yeah, because let me tell you something. Heroin, it's not it's not addiction here in the mind. Heroin is a physical addiction. And you know when you're really hungry, when you're really really hungry, and your stomach is shouting, "I'm hungry." You know, mm. you'll, you'll do anything to get food, you'll even steal. Now, it's the same thing with the heroin. When your body is shouting for heroin, you don't care about anything else but just to get that next fix. And that's how I slowly started losing my jobs, losing my work. Because I would need heroin, I would be going through withdrawals and I'll be at work and I'll just disappear. You understand? And eventually employers, they get fed up, they don't like that. 
and slowly but surely I fell off the charts. But you can go ask anybody in Johannesburg and Cape Town now in any of the restaurants, you go and ask them, you know Mark Harris. They'll tell you exactly who I am and what I've accomplished. I've won awards. In 2018, I won an award for best dish in South Africa. 2018. You can go look on Instagram, go check Chef Mark 96. Okay, we're going to check it and then we're going to put also your, uh, 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 the, the picture for before and now. Yeah. You go put there, the Chef Instagram. Mark 96, you will see my entire review is on there when I won the award. You'll see everything I've done, Chef Mark 96. Oh. Go and look. But support this page. Use this page as a platform. Support this page because what this page is doing or what this channel is doing is very good. It's sending out awareness. It's taking real people from the real streets, from the real situations and letting them tell their stories. Not these punks that pretend to do things and don't know what it's like to be on the streets. Guys, support this channel. This is what it does. This isn't life. What is this? System. You know? Put it full of system. So from my side, I thank you for watching. I thank you for, for listening. Okay, so you say your family was, is, is a rich family. Yeah. And the, the thing that makes you separate as a family is the drugs. Yeah. So what are you thinking right now? Do you want to continue uh, smoking drugs? Or do you want to stop and go to your family and maybe uh, start your new life? You know, I get emotional when I, when, when, when I think about it. Even if I stop drugs, my family has thrown me away so far that not even that will help. All I have left of my family now is just my mother, you know. I only have my mother left and she has told me that I don't exist in her life. Yeah, but if you want to stop and you go, I, I say, hey, my, my, you say to your family, please, I stop uh, drugs, I need to start my life. I see, see your age is going, you are in 50, 50 years old now. So you need to start a new life. So if you go to them and ask them, you think they won't help you? To be honest with you, it will it'll take a long time. It will take a very long time. I know that if my mom dies, I know that there's a lot of... Uh, how can I say it? There's a lot of assets coming my way. There's a lot of money that will come my way, you know. Mm. But it's, for me, it's not about the money. I would trade all of that just to be able to go home one more time, you know. To have my family back one more time. So, it's a difficult question to answer. But, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think with time, you know, time will heal. Okay, so um, so what what do you tell uh, 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 people? I mean, a uh, young a uh, young uh, young people that they 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 are in the street because there are a lot of young uh, young kids that in the street trying to smoke drugs, drop down the school and go in the street. And you what do you tell them as you uh, as an old man that you've been into drugs uh, uh, for many years? All I can say is. Stop being an idiot. Drugs isn't worth it. There's no high... There's no high that is strong enough, you know? There's no high that is strong enough to be able to keep you satisfied long enough to keep you off the streets. Eventually, you will end up on the streets. Eventually, everything will be taken away from you. So that nice feeling that you're feeling now, it's false, it's fake, it's not real. What's real is what's happening at your house. What's real is what's happening in your family. What's real is what's happening, what you need to do every day to get through. Drugs isn't going to get you through. That shot of heroin that you're spiking, that hit of the lolly from the tick that you're smoking, it's not worth it. If you want to end up on the street, if you want to be an old man like me on the street, have nothing, almost no teeth, have to ask people every day to buy you something, whether it's food 
or toiletries or whatever, then go for it. But if you don't want that life, then stop what you're doing now. Stop now. Now. Thanks. It's never, Ooh. ever too late. I mean, look here. Look at this. Look at the scars from drug abuse. Look at this. Is this what you want? So, so you mean uh, uh, you spike in your legs? Yeah, I spike in my legs, but this is what it does. This is how it eats you. This is how the drugs eat you from the inside. You don't know what you're putting into your body. You understand? It's poison. So you you mean you you, you take the, the heroin and you 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 spike yourself into into your blood. Into your into your um into your veins. Wherever you find veins, you spike it. So it's going straight in the blood. Straight in the blood. <laughs> straight that to the is heart. Very dangerous. So you mean every single day you spike? Every single day. Every day you're gambling with your life. Man, I, I, I can tell you about this. Uh, uh, see, me when I see that, uh, uh, that, that injection, oh, I'm scared of it. But you, you can be able sparking every single day. That's how much you don't care about your life. That's you, what I want to say. You lose all inhibition you lose everything all you care about is what is in do i have it with me all you i don't even have i wish i had a needle with me now all you care about is what is in that in that needle you know what i mean that yeah. liquid that's in that needle you don't care about anything else as long as that thing can get into your veins man you'll do whatever you'll rob your own family you'll steal from your own mother just yeah. to satisfy that that craving. So you mean you can you gonna be able to go in your in your mother's house oh. and just steal some money or steal something, go and sell out because you will, of that thing. You will sell your mother's house <laughs> without them even knowing. That's how it pushes you, that's how blind it makes you. You know? It's a devil that thing, eh? Yeah, it is. I don't even think that I think the devil is scared for that thing. Oh. Tools of the devil to undermine the righteous people that want to walk in the light, that want to follow God. So the devil he sends all these to help us. I'm a firm believer Christ, the Savior, the one who died on the cross for our sins. And what the devil's trying to do, he sees we're trying to better our lives. So he's putting obstacles in our courses and trying to bring us down. But luckily we pray for strength and guidance and discipline. And I believe Jesus Christ has never let me down. From day one till now, there's never been a day gone by when I haven't been able to make at least enough money for a child and something, you know, what I need. No, even if it's just a 50 rand for the whole day, it's cool. And, um, I don't have a sense of expectation, what I get, I'm blessed with, and I appreciate it. So all to, all to all those people out there that have ever helped me, I thank you and God bless. And I promise you, whatever I say on my board and at the robot, it's true. I've been suffering for 25 years. I get it. Oh, bummer. So, yeah, you okay. see, you see, it's not worth it, guys. At the end of the day, it's not worth it, you know? Uh, this life we live, you know, it's not worth it. I can see him now, he's, he's already in there. <laughs> yeah, he's... Now I'm thinking farmer, bro. I smoked the all. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Huh? let's continue. Alright. Uh, okay, Mr. Mark. So, uh, tell us, uh, what the challenge do you get in the street? Because uh, the way I know, uh, in the street there's a lot of challenge people facing. So tell us what the what do, what the challenge do you get? Oh, what did the hardest time do you get in the street? Oh, that's oh, that's an easy question to answer, man. It's a dog eat dog world out there on the streets, man. Every day is a battle for survival, you know. There's guys out there that want to rob you. There's guys out there that want to do bad things to you, you know. You got to really every day you got to fight for your life, you know. Besides that, you know, you've got normal people that just look at you and, you know, treat you like rubbish. They treat you like dirt. You know, you don't exist to them. 
but you don't care because like I said earlier all you care about is what you can get in this this needle does it, does, this is a needle that you use to spike yeah this is what we use to spike see okay I see that's what you use to spike and the liquid goes in there and then from there it goes in there yeah. cool. I would uh, <laughs> I would demonstrate but uh, I don't think uh, that uh, it would be allowed or whatever but yeah challenges on the street man uh, like I said it's just it's doggy dog world man you you sleep in places that you know aren't safe you go to places that aren't safe you know you wake up in the middle of the night people are trying to steal your stuff you know and you got to defend your stuff and then they want to stab you and you know it's it's just not worth it or you you got enemies that are on the street and you got to avoid them because they'll take your life they don't care you know it really makes you a ruthless person you know you really you lose who you are on the streets because you got to fight for every day for survival you got to fight for your life you know you can't just give up and say oh i'm on the streets and that's it you know you got to really 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 be strong and be solid mind and have a strong heart to survive on the streets because it's true what you said yeah people want to rob you people want to take everything away from you because they think you have money it's not the case at all you you are in the streets they can see you are also struggling but they still want money from you yeah because they see how you hustle and they seeing oh this guy is making money off his hustle so they sit back and they wait for you to finish hustling and when you finish hustling they'll follow you to wherever you're going whether it's to the dealer or to the shop or wherever you know they wait for you and when you finished and you come out or you walk past them and they'll call you and they'll either ask you oh give a cigarette or give a two rand or you know give something next thing you know you're surrounded by a bunch of guys and they're in your pockets um and they're in your they're in your pockets you know they taking all your stuff you know mm. everything it's just they 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 don't care you know no mercy on the streets no love oh, yeah. no peace no it's getting you know, uh -huh. see death around the corner every time we take a corner we face death it's either some tortsy wants to take your stuff and your money or the police they want to break you down so when we try to uplift ourselves they're trying to break us down they don't believe that we have good intentions that are we're trying to change our ways and we're trying to help the youth because our country is in trouble Kibara. the way that these young people are shooting guns smoking tuck and snuffing and all that it's making them crazy and this thing has got deep roots it's revenge killings from fathers killing fathers killing fathers killing uncles you understand it's going back many many years and the red one in number says if your blood falls i'm your brother i must go pick up your blood you understand mm. so it's not a joke this thing my bro it's real it's happening in coast and it's happening in central last night i was in central they had an armored vehicle 150 police um fully automatic rifles rubber bullets plus two quantums they swept the whole of central but i managed to you know god is good i wasn't doing anything wrong so mm -hmm. fortunately they never even bothered me but i'm saying is there's a lot of shit going on in the streets that people don't even know about central intelligence gathering they have profiles on all of us we've been warned we're under surveillance they're targeting us don't know why we're not big time or anything but they say it's organized crime where we're making other people rich through what we do you see, see just they, just just two days ago was it two days ago they arrested one of our brothers literally they came with ak-47s mm. r4s from Victoria. and not your average police this was uh, trt tactical response team mm. just to show you how serious this game is that's who chases us not your average sap you know detective or whatever we've got big big guys deep in the in, in, in the central intelligence if you want to call it that or whatever that come after us that's how serious this game is and again i tell you 
If you want to do it, if you think it's worth it, go for it. But just remember one thing, and the Bible speaks about it. What you sow is what you reap. God will not be mocked. What you sow, you reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap death. If you sow to the Spirit, you will reap rewards. So in other words, if you sow, if you just satisfy your flesh, you're going to die. But if you live to satisfy God and the Spirit, you will live an eternal life. Not here on earth, but in heaven when you die. Oh, that is a very bad, bad life that you guys are living in the streets. I hope maybe one day you guys will be uh, realize that the life that you are living is not nice. Uh, maybe you can change your life, at least be someone, you know. Well, to be honest with you, Kibara, with guys like you around that's doing this sort of stuff, you know, it gives me and it gives my brother yeah, hope, you know what I mean? Because hope at the end of the day is all we have. Faith, hope and love. So three things we have. That's the only stuff okay, we, we okay. have. Okay, you, you got to hope. You got to yeah. hope in your life. For 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 stopping or stopping uh, 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 drugs or which kind of hope do you just got? hope for a better life, man? What stopping it? drugs, helping the youth not to walk down the same path that we walk down, and basically to tell our story with a shock value so people can see shit. These dogs are being through some shit, man. And I don't want myself or my children or anyone in my family to go down that road because it's a hard knocks road. I didn't go to school, I left in Senate 5. My education I got on the street, I graduated with distinctions from the school of hard knocks. Straight. You understand? So that's the only, that's the only hope we have, Kibara. It's God. You know? You see this man, he's already died for our sins and I believe not that we are outies, outcasts from society. Jesus loves those people who need him, who are struggling. He's not coming for the people who are healthy, a lot of money, and they, you know, he's coming for the people that need him. And that's us. That's the hope we have. Jesus Christ is a powerful man, and he looks after those who need him. As long as you believe, I eat out of his hand every day. Mm. Like, like I said, faith, hope and love, it's all we have. Got to have faith that the hope that you have will change and the only way it's going to come through is love. Love for one another. Because if you don't love one another, man... <laughs> no love on the streets, man. That's the big problem. That's the problem. That, that, yeah, the thing that I, 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 I appreciate, I appreciate you guys is because you put in your, your faith in God faith. Yeah, it's good, the good. only thing we have that's keeping us still going is when we wake up in the morning with nothing and I say to myself, God is going to look after me. I believe, I know, He will not let me suffer more than what I can handle. He said to me in the Bible, He will not put more in your plate than you can handle. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm. So, and no one can suffer like Jesus Christ suffered on the cross. Maybe we go hungry sometimes, we're cold, we're wet and we're dirty. But Jesus, which I don't know, with the cat of nine tails, they whooped him a hundred times before they whooped him with the cat of nine tails. His can organs you go were showing, that? no one can go through that. Can, can you, can you, will you go through that? Yeah, bro. And still carry a cross. That they're going to nail you to. Let me tell you something, that's what addiction is. Mm. That's what carrying that cross is. This is the cross that we carry every day. We all have our own cross. This carry. is the cross that we carry on our backs every single day. And it's true what this man said. Oh. To go through what Jesus went through, man, no one will survive that. Nobody. But everybody, like he said, has their own cross to bear. Okay, so... Uh, um. Just uh, uh, tell the youth, because uh, we're going to close the video. Yeah. Tell the youth that are growing right now or, or about the about how the life is when you are into in the drugs. I can't tell you about how the life is when you're into drugs because you have no life. Your entire life revolves around, like I said, this, the drug, whatever you're into. There is no life. You are a walking dead person, dead inside. 
You can see it in the eyes, you can see it in the behavior. There's no life, except for that and except for every day your life being in danger. Every time you shoot up or you smoke or you do whatever, you know, you never know if that's going to be the bag that's going to take your life, you know. Where you're sitting and who you're sitting with, you don't know those people. You don't know if they're going to turn around and stab you, shoot you, kidnap you, whatever. Every day is a gamble. And that's what the life is that drugs has to offer. It's a gamble every single day. Okay. So, guys, I hope you hear what the, the, the guys say. Uh, Mark say uh, about the drugs uh, since he's been living in the street. So, I hope the... The uh, young uh, young people that are growing the streets, are uh, dropping the school, guys, don't drop the school and uh, go into drugs, guys. Because you're going to end up in a bad situation in life, like you see how this, uh, our brothers are living. So stop that, be, uh, that um, life you are thinking that is going to be better for you. Go to school, guys, and start your own life. Later on, you can be maybe a doctor or whatever. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Wait for other bang guys gonna come soon. Yeah, brother. All right, how's it, guys? Sorry again. Just to show you quickly, this is one of the reviews I got uh, on Instagram when I won 2018 for best dish. As you can see, this lady says my taste buds were all a quiver for the wonderful creations of head chef Mark Harris at Carbon Bistro. Um, you'll see more of this on Instagram. You just go Chef Mark 96 one word You'll see my profile photo is not a photo of me. It's a picture of a hamburger, but it's Mark Harris It's usually the first one that pops up. All right, and then This is me 18 years old standing next to the woman that introduced me to heroin so you mean that this uh, this girl this girl with the one introduced you yeah. into drugs this girl introduced me to drugs this photo was actually taken inside a club. Uh, we were both uh, high on ecstasy here and heroin and everything. But you can see how good I looked back then. And man, I can see you are look very nice. Bro. You see, and that mm. was the start of drugs. That's why I said to you, in the beginning, everything is nice. Everything is wonderful. But man, 30 years later, and this is what you look like. You saw the, what my <clears throat> legs look like. You saw all that stuff. So again, it's just to show you. Our drugs. This was my business that I had, my own catering company. It was called Kitchen Cowboys. Okay. This is what I had. This is what I built myself up to. Mm. You see? I had everything that life could offer. I was living the good life. And, uh, man, like I said, I traded all of that for a little bag of heroin. I yes. traded the good life for a little bit. So of heroin. you mean you meet that girl, uh, that, that girl in, in 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 the club, right? No, she was working at the same restaurant I was working at. Okay. Yeah, you see, that's where I met her the first time. We were working together. So then you started a relationship. Yeah, yeah, started a relationship. Went to her house the one day. We were gonna watch movies. She said to me, "She's coming now." She came back from her room, and then she came back with a like a tray, like a plate. And on the plate was the needle, uh, the heroin powder, uh, water, all the stuff you need to cook up a shot. And uh, I said to her, what is this? And she said to me, well, i got to tell you at some stage, um, this is heroin. I said to her, heroin, I've heard of this. I've seen it on TV, in the movies and whatever, but I've never seen it live in front of me, you know. And she said, well, this is what I use. Yeah. And I said to her, well, listen, let me try it. Because like I said, I didn't want to be a punk. I didn't want to look like a scared, you know, don't want to do anything dangerous. So I said to her, let me try. And uh, yeah, she gave me, she gave me my first shot of heroin. So the time you start, uh, uh, you start straight. Yeah, straight. Striking. Yeah, I didn't drink. She's a big girl. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke marijuana, I didn't do any of the other drugs first, like you start off. I went straight for the needle <sighs> and I fell in love with it. How, how, how did you feel at this first time? Whew. 
Man, Kibara, I would lie to you if uh, if I had to try and explain the feeling because there is no, you cannot explain the feeling that heroin gives you when you inject it. It, it is as if your whole body, you feel, you feel like you are king of the world. You feel that you are in power of everything. There's nothing that can stop you. There's no one that can tell you any shit. You feel like you are king of the world for about five minutes. And then once the shots kicked in, then you look like this. You look like this after five minutes. Yeah, after five minutes. You, you, you are fucked. Sorry for the word. You know? That's why I said to you, it's a lie. It's a big lie. You know, you feel great for a little while. So where, where, where's the girl now? The guy, the girl that destroyed your life? I don't know. I really don't know. All I know is that they moved away because I was living in Cape Town at the stage. And she called me up one day. She said I must come to her house. She's got something she needs to tell me. So I went there. She only stayed a few houses away from me. And uh, I went there and she said to me, listen, they're moving, they're moving to uh, Durban. Uh, she doesn't know how the relationship's going to work, but she thinks it's better if we just, you know, obviously end it. Because long distance relationships don't work. And that's the last time I saw her 30 years ago. I haven't heard of her again. I've tried looking for her on Facebook. But I don't know if she's changed her surname, if she got married or whatever. But yeah, like I said, if somehow she maybe stumbles across this video, Diane, yeah, I'm still here. Oh, man. Hey, she really destroyed your life, man. She really destroyed. Because the she, picture you know, that I see, the way you look that time, hey, you look nice, very handsome. But now, yo. Kibara, I can't say she destroyed my life. The most important thing you must remember, and everybody must remember, is you have a choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had a choice that day to say, no, you know, I don't want to. But I chose to use that thing. She may have introduced it to me. Yeah, after, after, uh, you choose to, 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 to be in, into drugs after, after you smoke, uh, after you spark at the first time, yeah. and you feel I, good. Uh, that's when I chose to live that life. You know what I mean? That's when I chose that drug over everything else. Nothing else mattered to me, like I keep saying. Because that is how it makes you feel. No. Like, like nothing else matters. Yeah, alright. Guys, I hope you understand what everything happened to Mark. Uh, you saw the picture, how he was look before and now. This is how he look now. This is how life is living like right now baby. so yeah i hope you are going to enjoy this interview make right choices so uh maybe we're gonna have next time uh part two yeah thank you so much thank you so much for those who are gonna come back and watch my video and those new who are coming and subscribing support to the channel. this channel support it yeah 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 so guys thank you so much